Hello everybody, hola, community, it's me, Pablo, I'm uh, not live this time, but it's, I'm here for another Blender Today, episode 78, yes, we might make it to 80 during the Blender conference, I think it's uh, just, um, maybe it's a good timing, 80 to 180, or 81, oh, that would be even better, because this show now, today, it's all about the upcoming changes for Blender 2.81, so let's get to them. I've just compiled Blender here and now I have my list of questions of, of, um, of uh, upgrades is quite quite long even though um, there were only um, like last time I managed to put like three weeks into one episode now in one week the fixes keep coming with uh, along with the smaller features and improvements on the already um, implemented features or the, the big changes in 2.81 also towards the end of the show I'll try to answer most of the questions here there's 112 comments but I'll try and make it uh, in a uh, let, let's try to keep it under one hour ish like always so the changes here I have a list that is very it's, it's very detailed but if you want a more uh, um, uh, a bigger um, like a bigger picture of what changed remember you can always read the changes in dev talk forum there's a, a, um, a link on the code blog here under code.blender.org you're gonna find the videos for the, um, the latest videos in the blender developers channel and the meeting notes right now the ones I'm reading is about 30 but actually is is more is like now uh, it's not the ones from from the 7th of, of October pretty much but you can find videos here and uh, pictures and lists we're gonna go through this anyway but yes let's get to it but it's time to begin so here remember <laughs> I'm trying to do this only in one screen so you're gonna see myself and the inception the blenderception blender todayception uh, going on here all right, it's only two more weeks, by the way, until I'm back in Amsterdam with a bigger screen and a nicer setup. So, so bear with me. Um, let's get to it. So, changes in the user interface, as I always say, I like to start with the UI. There is also viewport mesh sculpting. There is a lot of sculpting news this week. So, first one, register file browser as a child dialog window for the operating system. So, if you are here if you are following the changes in the last weeks regarding the file browser or like any temporary window um, for that matter basically behaves it it behaves like a regular window you just opens and then you end up with depending on the the operating system that you have you end up with two um, windows like separate windows now this behaves more of a like a child like a native child uh, window of your operating system so it means for example you can read here more in the in the commit log but it means that uh, for example the, the the child window will stay on top of the parent blender window but not on top of other non blender windows other apps that you're running the, it minimizes with the parent so um, when you minimize the blender itself it will also minimize the ch child windows Temporary child windows are like uh, the file browser, the user preferences, or when you um, uh, open the info editor, for example, all those temporary things that you open that are not the main Blender window. Uh, they can be moved independently. They don't add their own item in the tasks bar. So in here, for example, I, well, it's hard to see, but for example, I have this Blender and now I will open the, um, for example, the preferences. So I go F4 preferences and if I change here, you see that there is no one, there's no blender, two blenders here. There is the blender and then there is the child windows down here. So that's, that's more or less how it should also be this kind of the same on windows. I think on windows it makes uh, one per, uh, per item, not anymore. Now it should actually behave like a child window. Uh, so it, overall, it's a pretty pretty nice improvement because it, it makes it a bit more native. It doesn't make them so weird and unique anymore. Also, there has been many changes uh, regarding the file browser. And my favorite so far is that it will now remember your preferences on, um, 
your preferences as seen for example if you have filter or thumbnails or horizontal or sorted by date uh, all of those things it sound <laughs> may sound like a small thing for a lot of people especially if you're coming from another software but it this hasn't been um, every time you open blender you have to always by name you have to sort by date every time so this being saved on your preferences just the same way that uh, quick favorites are saved for example when you have an option that you add to the quick favorites these uh, quick favorites get saved when you close blender and they save to your preferences so no matter where you in which blend file you're working on you always have access to them um, and you don't have to set them every time so these uh, in this behavior also the display options in the uh, for the for the file browser are going to be saved so pretty nice more file browser updates the file browser browser tool bookmark reaction ah yeah the when you have open the file browser uh, you may remember that a few um, few weeks uh, was it a, no uh, some time ago some weeks ago these buttons were on all the way to the left and they were hard to reach especially because now we don't have the loved I really liked the two dots that we that we could use to go one level up well now they're here so it, it's still a bit annoying that to go you have to go and try and like aim to this button that is in between two other buttons I'd rather have the whole row but it's an improvement I think the ultimate uh, improvement would be to just have this path clickable where you can just click and in a regular file browser for example you just have you just have the uh, this path where in a, in a clickable so you can just click on it and this one I have it disabled but you can have it uh, you can make it so the 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 browser is clickable so I don't have it enabled here because I installed my computer recently but usually you can I think a Nautilus has it by default um, yeah for example if you're in an app you can always click back in the folders and you can uh, even see the contents or do perform actions from there I think it's the same on Windows and I'm not sure about Mac all right next the <laughs> somebody said that i should that someone mentioned it left a comment that i should make a remix on all the next 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 uh, sorry it gets annoying but it's it's just natural to me to say next feature use responsive layout for upper bar in the file browser so if you've been doing video editing you might have noticed that for a couple of weeks the um the this top bar in the file browser didn't fit so it was just a whole bunch of buttons mushed together there now they nicely uh, wrap around and be and are all accessible in the same uh, in the same area so very nice addition thank you Julian for fixing it um, Julian Isol 73 3d or new you are, well not new he's been working around on for blender forever um, but he's now in Amsterdam Yes, for real, surrounded by developers. So that must be motivating. Next, Team uh, Ghost, refresh standard cursors available for all platforms. Yeah, there has been a lot of work going on in the uh, cursor department. So the cursor, for example, you, you all have the arrow, but now if you're in edit mode, you have the uh, crosshair, for example, crosshair. The other modes, I think Sculpt uh, also used to have this one, but they was not available for Vertex Paint or Weight Paint. They used to have the arrow. So now they all are more consistent. This change by uh, William Reinish uh, made it. So also there are new, um, new cursors that if you are on a Mac, especially you're gonna see them. They're super high res. If you're on Linux, you probably are used to see these ones, but they're also uh, in Windows they're having updated so they're more or some of them are more generic because they use your system ones and some of them are custom to blender but it should also work better in the with the big cursors uh, option more features each node tree now has its own quick favorites yes quick favorites this feature that has been super super popular and 
that allows you to I, I just show it right like five minutes ago that if you add the quick favorites um, these quick favorites are now uh, sensitive per um, per editor subtype so not only the node editor remember that in 2.7 uh, this was the node editor and it just was one editor but and now it's split into compositor shader and texture um, texture editor texture node editor there's now uh, also per sub type you can have your own quick favorites uh, more move all selected well this is a bunch of um, commits that make it more consistent for the, um, the the way you behave in the node editor or the dope sheet keys or the uh, markers now you when you select them when you select items and move them now all of them move at the same time in 2.80 was it no i think in 2.7 the if you select multiple um nodes for example and you just click drag it would only move the active ones super annoying you will have to move with like g key and Oh, and now it's, they fixed something with the G key I, I was having the other day. There was for a few days it happened that if you press G, it would only move the items as long as you keep the G pressed, and it was driving me nuts. Now it has been fixed. I just compiled now, so so it should. Yeah, it's the latest and greatest. So nice fix. Um, so this behavior also is now translated into the uh, selected strips. Uh, so in the sequencer and markers and dope sheets so very nice addition while we are here in the shader editor the slot popover now also has if you are in edit mode now also has the assign select and deselect um, buttons so you can assign materials all from here without actually going into the uh, material editor so there's Every day there's less reasons to go to the material editor actually if you have the node the the node the shader editor open. Um let's see. More question more no questions, more features. Use consistent names for blend modes. Yeah, this is a, a another that sounds small, but I wanted to acknowledge the developers in this case, Yevgeny Makarov, this is one of them, uh, one of the commits of, of he that he made recently. It's a small thing. It makes a uh, use consistent naming for all the blending modes, uh, so they are uh, more consistent in the the way the, the wording, the if the name of the blending capitalized, and it's all it's small things, but it, it adds to the overall polished. Uh, of the user interface. So thank you, Yevany. I just wanted to mention this one because there are all plenty of commits that he made recently along these lines of uh, polishing the UI. Um, so thank you for that. As a thank you. Uh, um, okay, remember the emulate uh, middle mouse button setting. This emulate middle, middle mouse button basically made it so if you didn't have a mouse that that had a third button, the button in the middle, like some mouse still do, but uh, it's not very common. It was it's a very legacy option, but some people still use it. The thing is that many um, features in Blender, many tools use the Alt key, and this emulate middle mouse button would use that Alt key as well. So there was a conflict there. So with the new f with the new preference in the in the preferences under input. Yes, once you have the emulate three button mouse uh, press uh, uh, enabled, you can choose between using Alt, which is the default, uh, the, the how it used to be, or you can also make it use the operating system key. On Windows keyboards is the Windows key. On uh, Mac is the 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 Apple one, the uh, command, I think. No, not command, the other one. And uh, on Linux keyboards, are there, is there such a thing? <laughs> We should have Linux keyboards, yes, <laughs> with a little uh, penguin on it or so. The okay, another small, small fix, but also worth mentioning because it's from a developer that I haven't seen before, Paul uh, Thidio. He um, it's a small thing, a small change, but made it so the text field uses the actual um, colors. <laughs> 
uh, in the in the search popover on other popovers or the box type of popovers so now they looks more consistent especially visible on the blender light theme uh, just a, another small thing but I wanted to acknowledge because um, he also made an improvement on the theme for the NLA now you can also set colors for the channels and the tracks so that's a, an addition that he made thank you Paul and keep them coming keep those patches coming actually I like this one also I wanted to mention it because it's it's an issue that uh, somebody reported on the blend on the paper cuts for theme development here is a thread that contains a bunch of uh, paper cuts like small annoyances that are in the um, in this case in the theme development theme theme editor but also they're all user interface related or pie menus or you name it all right next and that's it for the user interface i think i have more user interface but related to sculpt in the coming features all right switching thing we need a <laughs> we, we we need a a like a special um like a sound for when we switch topics like a <laughs> viewport show background image beneath transparent objects so if you are in uh, cycles this only works for cycles for the time being um, it's planned to be implemented for the workbench and the um, and the and Eevee but in the background images when you are from camera view now the the images with transparency will actually uh, work <laughs> like the transparency will work with transparent objects you have transparent objects you should see the image behind it's a, an improvement that was done by uh, Jeroen Bakker. So thank you, Jeroen. And this feature should come available for the other um, render engines at some point. But it's good that at least it's available for one of them. Next feature is uh, Mesh. Support face maps when joining. So when you join objects, they were going to support and going to keep their face maps. That wasn't possible before. Small, it's more like a fix than a feature, but it's good to mention if you had issues with the face maps. Um, if you haven't used face maps yet, it's because they are this weird new thing that was added in 2.8 and still not, all the potential is not being uh, used as much. But you can use them for rigging, for example. It's uh, on the same place where you can find vertex color, UV maps, and so on. But yeah, basically, it's a, instead of a vertex group, or is a use faces all right next um voxel remesh enable adapt adaptivity so i mentioned last um ah, let's let's open the actually it's in here in the logs there should be a a video but um in the last episode i actually showed this feature while i was testing the remesh basically it allows you to uh, remesh but not you know uniform way but more in like more detail where it's needed some something like the topo but no not really but it, it it helps you if you're gonna switch to the topo after remeshing for example you can um, uh, the, the topo works by adding detail where you need it in a more uh, where you actually need it so if it's a planner surface and you don't need so much detail there it's not gonna add many polygons so it's a bit of an optimization but um, with a remesh with the voxel remesh with the open BDB in this case all right uh, next all right the, the hot topic of the day sculpting so sculpting there is a slight topology rake performance improvements so yes performance improvements not only these ones but they are all their performance improvements um, for example um, Brecht in this case Brecht van Lommel the creator of uh, like half of Lander <laughs> and uh, cycles among other things he um, he made it so the there are improvements on the drawing of the of uh, or the manipulation of, of masks for example up to twice two times faster on some tools for like the mask expand for example operator uh, but uh, the other one that is 
very impressive is the one that it gives a 10% improve speed improvements, performance improvements on the mesh filter. Um, the, for, the, the mesh filter, for example, the one that adds noise to the whole mesh, those tools that we showed a few episodes ago in um, sculpt mode, now they are up to 10% faster on a 3 million polygon mesh on a quad core. So if, of course, if you have 8 cores, 16, 32, it's gonna be faster and uh, if you have more polygons also. But that's just an example of the improvements. And features, yeah, there has been new features, more like fixes or like improvements on the already existing features. So, uh, for example, the 3D paint cursor, so the cursor that adapts to the shape now also works with multi-resolution, uh, before it didn't, then um, the mesh filter, mask and dirty mask, all those mask operations, they are also now available while you're working with multi-resolution multi modifier, sorry. So if you don't know the multi-resolution, it's amazing. It's the, it's been around for years for, I don't know, a decade, I would say. Maybe not a decade, but, or maybe, maybe, maybe not. It's been a while. But the multi-resolution, it's a way to subdivide your mesh and allows you to go back and keep the same original mesh. So now if you're using this and you're sculpting, you the, the 3D cursor, the the one that adapts to follow the shape is also available here and the same for the tools for masking which are now i'm glad to see this because i mentioned it in the last episode the all the mask operations are now in their own menu yes so the sculpt menu is not so huge anymore now it used to be super big now all the mask operations are here they're more easier to they're easier to discover so you can perform this also now in um, in multi race and if you go back levels does it does it work so backpack wow yeah it keeps it nice can I go higher yes neat wow exciting all right um, remeshing so now remeshing has by the way if you have a multi race modifier the remeshing tools should be um, should be grayed out or should not sh show up. So in the remesh, yes, exactly. So it shouldn't. So if you remove remesh, now uh, the, the multi-res modifier, they're not compatible one with each other. Uh, the remesh one, now it's here. So now it's available. Also, the there is a shortcut now for remeshing. So if you remesh a lot, you can do control R, like control remesh. Um, to remesh, so if you're sculpting all the time, you're adding detail, you can keep remeshing, and um, yeah, it just works. If you want to um, remesh with QuadriFlow, you can do Control Alt R, and it's gonna pop up this menu here, which is also available under. Somebody mentioned that remesh was right next to. There you go. It was two modes: the voxel mode and the quad for QuadriFlow remesh. So that one, um, I missed it in the last episode. Somebody said like, hey, you need glasses on top of your glasses because I mix this feature. So, yep, yep. All right, um, more features regarding the cursor. So last week I mentioned how you have the curve of the fall off curve. This one, this one in white up here when you're sculpting. Yes, that is um, among those features. Also, the, the the overall cursor is more smooth. It has more subdivision. So even if you have a, a very large um, here, a very large cursor, you can still feel like it's nice, smooth, and it's um, soft and amazing. But there is a thread about it, so I can actually open this link and make it more clear because um, Paolo Dovarro, one that worked in this feature, he added the list here. So second circle to preview the strength in the cursor. Yes, I mentioned that one and uh, increase the resolution of the cursor. Yes, remove the font shadow of the numbers. Yes, too much visual noise. Um, 
increase the alpha of the cursor and uh, ah yeah and the change on directions that now it follows the rest of the cursors in blender for making it um for making it more strong or not or less strong all right um this one this one sounds very innocent change but brush default settings have been updated by someone that, that actually sculpts so very nice pablo Barro went through the brush settings of the the um, of each brush in the sculpting mode and they have new defaults so they are working better out of the box previously they needed some tweaks because some features were added along the way some features work better in one case or the other um the the sculpt mode for example have been improving very slowly over the the, the at the beginning when it was added and uh, many of the features that were added recently didn't have like they were not on by default so now they're new default settings so sculpting should work much better out of the box there is also um so if you're sculpting these uh, settings here and for the brushes which also contain new um new icons up here they should work better out of the box like the pinch has a, also has a new icon with the with the arrows more visible and the cursor itself changes if you are using depending on the type of cursor you're gonna see that the color changes so in this case it's orange but if you have these ones for example grab um, it's yellow uh, so you can better see which category of um, of cursor you have active and masking also should be white and simplify also and mesh filter and this is a tool that we already seen the one that is now faster so you can make this kind of stuff weak nice but not really there <laughs> great um that is all i think for the skull changes I might be missing some of the no ah yeah the post brush origin offset this one has a a new setting that i showed last week i showed you how the post brush now has a preview of where it's the beginning where it, what is what it starts the uh this line here where the pivot point is going to be when you're posing your mesh now there is a setting that it's here in the brush popover which maybe should be exposed once you're when you're using the post brush maybe it should be exposed on the top because it's very very useful and one of the few things that you're going to keep changing all the time um one using this feature because it allows you to tweak the offset or maybe it should be a modifier too i don't know it's a slider and you can basically give it an offset to the start the pivot point of your post brush so it works much better in cases where the where when you know that the pivot point is going to be far from where you perform the tweak and uh that's it for all the changes yes improvements performance should be much better um uh, new shortcuts you name it all kinds of stuff for go for sculpting so go and sculpt some stuff we change topic grease pencil new smart smooth for strokes this is a huge improvement that you may notice if you're um, drawing a lot with grease pencil because it just works better out of the box basically there were some cases if you had a uh, if you were drawing like super fast you will see some um some some weird like a uh, tampering on the on at the end so it will be very it wouldn't be nice basically the, the brush wouldn't be nice so now it is so i think they're in the 2.81 release notes you can see some um of the improvements in grease pencil here you can see some of the images with all the new uh, changes and this is the one improvement in stroke ending now it's much better and also if you're drawing fast um the the mesh is not so dense it will simplify depending on the speed so it's much more efficient so all right what is this guy doing here <laughs> okay go away next <laughs> um 
that ah, and re reviews another uh, improvement in performance so reviews bvo footprint when using modifiers basically better usage of your memory so if you had uh, problems with um with the memory of Chris pencil when using modifiers now this should be improved next animation this is huge 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 it's motion pads this has been um, a thing since forever that motion pads are this feature that has been around blender since again since forever basically it's what it does it adds a um, it adds a bunch of here it's a, it's a adds a bunch of dots and a line when if you activate it from the motion pads panel you cut you have to calculate it and basically it does this so it adds points on the uh, on, on the, the the path of your bone for each one of the bones and yes i did it with one bone so it's okay but if you have a production rig or like uh, like something like blend rig where you have uh, 3000 bones for example or spring also has thousands of bones it could get slow up to the point where you could not even use it so the animators have been asking for this for ever for years for years even before asking for features like oh what if we can edit these points and move it around which will be amazing i think every time um, somebody was about to code this thing it was like first improve performance because it was imp almost impossible to use it not anymore there has been uh, many fixes uh, regarding the, um, the improvements on the dependency graph this topic that is often forgotten and it got and it's so much work because it's basically the heart that, con that links everything in blender into one place um thanks to the work of sergey now the motion pads are up to 15 times faster using spring production files so spring is a very detailed uh, model you we could call it a production like something they would use in a production a feature film the same as uh, other models from um, from Blendry that use Blendry, the Blendry system. So 15 times faster, that sounds like a good improvement. How does it work? Well, instead of updating the whole armature for the motion pads, it only updates what's needed. So it's uh, it's an ID level, so it, it's a bit more granular, basically. It only updates what is needed. And uh, what else? Motion tracking, actually they didn't know that one. The highlight keyframes in path visualization. So um, in, the, in the path you're gonna see which the, the, the one, the keyframes, the frames that are keyframes. More. Um, and there is a new user preference. I don't know if you noticed, but I animated this bone. This sick animation, yes. I don't know if you noticed, but it doesn't have any kind of smoothing at the beginning or at the end. The interpolation is linear. So this has been, this is a setting in the user preferences, which is not the default, but is often uh, wanted. Like by default, Blender will add some smoothing at the, at the, on the edges. So I think I have a shortcut for starting Blender. In, this is just, okay, yeah, this is Blender, but in more of a factory startup it looks about the same but i this one is how it will start when you animate uh when, when you start by default now uh in the you're gonna see that when you animate for example the position of an object in the graph editor you're gonna see that the curves have this kind of easing in and out this uh, among with uh, along with the smoothing they are an option now in the preferences and their animation you're gonna find here for default smoothing mode so you can have continuous acceleration or none you can have default interpolation so to have it constant linear or Vesier. Vesier is the default is the one that gives it this kind of effect and uh, linear also and default handle this option was there before but um, th these options were there before but it's a good addition 
if you're a little heavy, a lot of animations, it's good to have. Next feature, Blender Video Sequence Editor. In the edit, in the sequence editor, a few weeks ago, there has been a new, um, there, there was a new feature added for having automatic uh, generation of fade in and fade out. So, for example, if you have, um, let's see, if you have an image, let's use the masks that I use for the camera here. So, for example, if you have two images and you want to fade in and out between them. You can now right click and fade, fade in and out for example, and you have, oops, fade in and out. I've just this, this feature, this thing, and it worked. <laughs> oh, there you go. Something, I didn't have them selected properly, I think. So, yeah. That's pretty much it. It was added some uh, weeks ago and then it was removed because it was using a some kind of, um, of operation in, in Python that wasn't allowed and now it's uh, it's back now, it has been refactored. So yeah, if you check out the uh, animation editor, you're gonna see the keyframes that correspond to this, uh, to this strip. So you can move them around and still it's gonna keep the uh, fade in and fade out. They don't update when you move this, unfortunately, um, but it's a good, it's, it's a start. Or they do. No, they do. They start here. Yeah. Okay, next. It would be good if they were dynamic in the future. So, uh, now it's a whole bunch of, uh, of features. So, let's call it miscellaneous. There is an operator that has been um, in Blender actually for a while, now it has been exposed. It's the uh, in the image uh, editor, you can now resize the image. So you can change the size to a new one. Um, this was uh, already used in Blender for making um, uh, tests, but now it's available in the image editor. You can resize images, yay! There's no uh, interpolation mode in the resizing, so I would assume that it's fairly... I, I guess it's the default, so no interpolation. So what if I make this like a 4K? That looks fairly good, actually. Hmm. I bet the YouTube compression system loves this. <laughs> Alright, cool. I. We'll move on with the next feature. All right, um, here. Rigify, oh, Rigify got a pretty much a complete rewrite. So let's find it here. There is the documentation on the release notes where you can read about it. There is a big internal API refactoring has been worked on since last year and now it's committed. Um, there is a uh, you, you can read here in the in the release notes, but there have been changes for the users, but also for scripters. They there is a new API that you if you use Rigify for like in your pipeline for automatically building rigs, check it out because there has been changes. Um, next, while we are here in the release the work in progress release notes for 2.81, you're gonna find in more features that there is a, in, under the audio and video output section that there is op Opus Audio Codec support. If you don't know what it is, it's because you don't need it probably at, at, for now, but uh, it was created with the intention to replace Vorbis and Speaks. And it's uh, you can use it in construction, construction with the WebM if you care about open standards uh, for codecs. Next. Um, GPU platform support level, yes, this one here, it's a, uh, it's a warning that's gonna show up if you don't, if your graphics card doesn't support it. In this case is the X11 uh, on Linux, which looks beautiful, and you're gonna have the messages for Windows, and for, there's no implementation for Apple, but uh, basically you're gonna get a, a if, if your graphics card has a 
maybe it doesn't support all the features, you're gonna get a, a thing now, it's not gonna crash on your face, at least it shouldn't. Uh, next feature, this was added by the community, so Alessio Monti di Sopra, hey, why can't I, okay, link here. Um, add, a, add center view to cursor operator, center view to cursor, so you can set a cursor and center the view to the image editor and the clip editors. So thank you Alessio for making this tiny, tiny little awesome feature. Uh, speaking of the clip editor, there is now a, uh, you can drag the plane track corners with left mouse button, so it's a bit more intuitive. That one by Sebastian Koenig. And the last feature that I gotta mention about the miscellaneous is that the image now supports storing full image buffers for each undo steps. step. So it avoids using too much uh, memory, so they, they share the tiles when they are, when they make sense. Um, but yeah, basically it's a, it's a fix on the undo steps for texture paint. So if you had issues with that, and text painting textures in the image editor or in, in images in general, now should work much better. And last section, which I call fixes. <laughs> this one uh, is by Pedro Reis, also his first patch. Congrats. A first contribution to Blender. Pedro, thank you. Um, he uh, fixed a crash when using a hotkey for a new file template or recent file. So it took the time to go through the code and understand where the crash was happening. He fixed it, it was apparently a null that hasn't been, that wasn't being checked. He even added a comment starting with capital window and then ending with a dot. Super legit, thank you for that. Making it all nice and clean. And uh, thank you Pedro and I hope to see more of you. And let's that's it. There is an EV, plenty of EV speeds up. I only wrote one because it's um, uh, it's a speed up on that speeds up when you're editing a mesh using EV. Um, it uh, basically avoids looking for the Orco original coordinates layer, so it should be faster now. And that is all. Let's see how much time. Forty-two minutes. Okay, I have twenty minutes ish to answer question. Let's go. Let's go. Let's. Oh, I had it open. And it went away. Okay, let's hope it's um, let's hope it's still here. Okay, let's see. So, how many questions? One hundred. Okay, no new questions, luckily. <laughs> so, I uh, this is a the question section. Let's let's give it a proper. Now, this should have its own its own uh, uh, its own like. Yes, question section, and we leave it on during the whole questions. No, no kidding, kidding, kidding. All right, next, uh, next. No, first, I, uh, I I mentioned that I'm here. I'm that I'm in Madrid, so I explain a little bit, and I'll be back at the Blender headquarters in a couple of weeks. Yes, I mentioned that before. So I, uh, yeah, I will be in just a number of a uh, couple of actually next Monday, not the seventh, but the fourteenth. I should be. Uh, doing this live from the Blender Animation Studio. So it's only one week more. Um, only one more week, yes. All right, uh, next. So thank you every for everybody for the nice comments. Uh, uh, everybody got a bit worried that I was... Uh, I was worried because I wasn't... Uh, yeah, I should have tweeted or said something on social media about it. I was so busy with work, I was working um, I work at the, by the way, yes, that the reason I'm here is I'm working at the animation studio. I took a one week, one month off from my Blender staff. I'm also using Blender here every day. So, and, and, uh, I, I'm really liking, and I hope to show some, uh, something about it soon at some point. Uh, it's a pretty cool project, by the way. Ne uh, have a nice vacation from Blender today. No, it's not vacation. I keep doing it. It's Sunday. It's like 30 degrees outside Celsius. Uh, all right, it's ink inkstower for grease pencil. So all the nice comments, thank you. Um, and there are a few questions here in the in the middle. That's why I wanted to go through the. It's not that I wanted to read all the nice <laughs> comments. I read them, but uh, here. Um, 
Hi Pablo, will Blender get an install wizard for Linux? It needs updated it needs updated on Linux as well. I love Blender, but on Windows it's easy to download and update. But I don't always like Windows 10. On on I think it really depends because on, on Linux having an installer doesn't really work that well because on on Linux you will have the stores, you know, the, the same way you have the Apple Store or the on the Windows Store. On, uh, for example, here you have the I have the Pop OS store, which is the uh, the one that manages all my installations. So from here I can install um, anything like Steam or communication or anything really. So I think each store should have its own, and you should find Blender. And we should try and work with these providers to have the latest Blender here. So in this case, Pop OS has 2.79b here and it's probably coming from GNOME but the picture is from 2.48 so the picture is 10 years <laughs> older than the ver Lender version so there is a <laughs> there is something that we need to fix here all right 26 megabyte Blender was 26 megabyte jeez anyway um Next, have you have you plan? Do you plan to implement cache for the compositor? There is some sort of caching, but um, it's it, it needs the compositor needs my, it needs some love. There is um, there are people maintaining it, but not actively developing right now. But I see a bright future in it. I've been using it a lot in the project I'm working on here, and uh, I I yeah, we need a real time compositor, same way as Eevee, but if in real for the for the compositor, I think that would be the best. All right, next uh, question: <laughs> Paulo Darwin on fire? No, no, like not literally on fire. She's she's okay. If I run out of information about Blender, a, few, a huge void in me. Oh, Claudio, remember you can read the the developer meeting notes here. You have people talking about uh, about Blender all the time, so they are they are there is content. Um, you should make a separate. Serious call today in Pablo Duarro, yes, absolutely. Um, cerebral Mac malfunction says, oof, putting a big drop down called options right on the main window that only constraints run from origin tools, controls, that's not gonna be good for new users. Uh, it doesn't only contain the transform origin, it will contain more features, it contains already the um, it contains the to transfer to move the location and the patterns and the origins but the idea is to have more features there so they can't just all fit in the the, the top bar uh, also remesh should be not in object data properties so the structure edit and should only be in the viewport with the other tools um, not really why in the why only in the viewport it's not only a viewport thing it's a it's an object uh, it's a mesh level actually, so that's why it's in the in the mesh, and uh, it's it's destructive. But so are other features that are that are here. Um, so I think it I think it belongs belongs there. <laughs> packed, yes, packed. Today is another packed episode. Uh, next question: Blender is too difficult to use by Legend TM, especially when you have to do the map. Too many steps need to be done. With the 3DS Max 2020, one step I immediately make the map. What map are you talking about? Blender has a screen that is difficult to understand. Blender, if it wants to make great success, must have the screen and menu identical to 3DS Max. Then up to that point, Blender will become the largest program ever created in the world. I think if 3DS Max was the largest program ever created in the world, then I would believe it. But 3DS Max is far too from the best. Maya also, 3D, uh, uh, Cinema 4D, ZBrush, Houdini maybe it takes, but even then, uh, no, there is no better program, in, the best program in the largest program in the world. Maybe in size, maybe in gigabytes, but not in features. I think it's the, the future is just to have a bunch of uh, softwares talking to each other, like there is happening now. Houdini does, is great at, at its thing, ZBrush is great at what they do, Substance, Marvelous, um, I think everybody should do their own and do it properly. And there is Blender who does everything and maybe some parts better than others, but that's it for 
uh, people that like open source. Uh, is there any chance we'll get an auto update in Blender? There is one. Install a Steam version. Yeah, that's one way you can install Steam and Steam updates automatically. Um, the there somebody made um, an automatic uh, like um, how is it called? I don't. I can't remember. If you Google it, somebody made it. It's, I think you have to pay for it, but uh, it's an auto updater and you can update quickly. Yes, but the thing is that the auto updater like. It is, there is a stable version every four months. I, I talked about this every uh, a few times already. Um, Tides, thank you for taking the time to do this, Perley. Thank you. And uh, you were missed over the last past two weeks. Great updates. I usually, as usual, particularly excited about library overrides. Me too. I need to investigate this further. Uh, is there some plans? Ah, I already answered this one. Hey, bro, you're back. Yes, <laughs> I am. Quadriflow remesh pattern is. The, right there. Ah, oh, yeah, this is the one uh, that I missed. Thank you. I mentioned already the way to switch between voxel and quad remeshing. Um, Hans Gody, I'm adding back and Mac and Windows builds for the Bevel Profiles branch. I also forgot to run it. Ah, oh, thank you. That's a very nice. Yeah. So it what it means is that in the build bot now you can. Um, uh, you can find in under experimental branches the bevel profiles branch for mac and for windows as well so pretty neat but now they are updated to october 2nd and this one is on september 24. <laughs> can't have it all right because they are not uh, automatically updated they are manually pushed by the developers all right um next and here Quadriflow remesh. Oh yes, um, it was a jam-packed space, jam-packed with incredible features that will affect my day-to-day -day work. Um, two different retopo options will prevent me from needing to spend hun time hunting and filling holes. Yes, video editor has prefetching. Yes, insta meshes for quick functional retopos. I didn't get that one. Data block override. Some attention on linking referencing. Yes, this is what the library override should do. Ability to have collection. Yeah, so actually writing the, the list from last week. Wish list. Ability to have multiple background images visible through multiple viewports from multiple cameras. Currently, I think I need to have a cameras active to view through it. Uh, yeah, good point. It's uh, that is missing. Um, Matthew says, I love the new assisted perspective. I would suggest having the already improved two or three points. Yes, yeah, basically to have it custom or to have it always uh, like persistent. So you can continue drawing and it will always follow. Yeah, that would be a pretty nice addition for the Chris Pencil guys. Um, it's a feature around Vertex Color now. <laughs> uh, it's kind of a feature, kind of a feature. If you look at the past e episode, you're going to know what we are talking about. <laughs> Blender is like a game for me. <laughs> Am I a game to you? <laughs> Am I a joke to you? Meme? Insert meme. Okay. Um, render pass option is amazing. Yes, it is. Thank you, Jeroen Bakker, for working on it. At mind. Coquito says, Pablo, you should put glasses on top of your glasses. <laughs> yes, sorry. The info panel has a lot of panels that's already under available. It's that is already available under object properties. The info panel has a lot of panels that's already under available. Info panel. What is the info panel? Um, anyway, also seems like the new dumping ground for add-ons. This one, yeah. But it it's it's not Blender's fault. It's the develop the, the add-on developers that they all use this space. So if you have a hundred add-ons, they are and they're all putting it here. Um, but add-ons can put panels anywhere. They can put them in the render, in the materials, anywhere. The thing is that they're all for the for the view um, uh, for the 3d view mainly so they want everybody wants to have them there um, next this is a bug I try sculpting using one method and my PC PC struggles I try sculpting using another method and my PC responds beautifully what is what kind of method I import an object OBJ subdivide sounds like a bug please report it um, Quadriflow remeshing is a huge time saver. Could you add some 
guiding ability to it as in Siri measure guide in ZBrush. I don't know the ZBrush equivalent, but some guiding ability to it for the, yeah, so like a preview of how it's gonna look. Not familiar with it. Uh, Metron says, thank you again, Pablo. I look forward to these videos every week. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice comment. Uh, I thought it was in live. Yes, sorry, it's not. Uh, not yet, next week. I'm pretty much new to Blender. My question is pretty much basic. How can I save my paint texture from stencil to my model? It keeps on disappearing every time I save. Exit and come back to it. Did I miss something? Um, every time you save, uh, or if you quit Blender, it's gonna... You have to save your image, but if you quit Blender, it's gonna tell you that, hey, you haven't saved images. Um, I thought the sequencer would not be an important improvement. Hey, why? Why? The fact that there is a developer working on Grease Pencil or Eevee, it doesn't mean that, that there are two different developers. And the people working on the sequencer now, it's a completely different developer. Two developers, there is GD Quest, Nathan, and um, um, Richard from uh, that, that is now also working thanks to the development fund let's not forget that all these new people working every uh, working either full-time or part-time in blender is thanks to your subscriptions to the blender development fund that keep the uh, the income coming every month so developers can be hired and can have a normal life using and making open source, which is so weird for many, including even for me, it's like making open source, but they are getting paid and having a normal life. Yay. Um, hey, when can we expect full UDIM support? 2.82, I think. No, 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 not 2.81. Any timestamps? Yes, sorry. Somebody can could do it. I will be so happy. Next question, Kronos. Like the freeze time so people can learn and get up to speed. I like the freeze time so people... Ah, yeah. Like, because it's not live that you can stop and learn. Yes. Brad says, I hope you had a great break. Yes, I, I was... <laughs> a, a break. It's a break from my regular life, but I'm using Blender more than I have since spring. In Since spring of a movie project in uh, March. So... I'm loving it. Um, like Blender is coming out of my eyes every day, so I'm using it so much. Hi, can somebody please tell me why Blender is so hard to install on Linux Mint? It shouldn't. Blender, like this is I'm on Linux. I'm using Ubuntu, well, not Ubuntu, uh, Pop OS, but it's based on Ubuntu, which is also um, uh, the same for Mint. So you just download, and it's a a, a tar file which you unzip and open, and that's it. Um, also, you can use the, 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 as I said, the shop, the local shop or store that comes with your operating system. And if it's not updated, just poke them, tell them, hey, update your blender. Um, next. Damn, the PS load up music. Yes. <laughs> I love it so much. I, I'm doing this all in one take, just so it feels like a live stream, but also, uh, it doesn't go well at the beginning because live streams you just keep rolling but and in, in here i have the chance to stop it so i started this live this video like already five times because i was making a mistake or i didn't feel confident at the beginning so uh, i hear that music like ta -da, and then start many times uh, metal gear mac 3 so much good stuff on the horizon for blender pablo is also going to improve the painting tool sets the sculpting UX UI might need changes to manage all the changes coming. Yes, I couldn't be more happy uh, for Pablo Dovaro's existence and coming into working in Blender stuff. Sculpting, painting is really, it's really adding a lot, and uh, it's gonna make a big impact in yeah everywhere in the in the industry. Uh, awesome. Let's please clone him. Um, Thank you, this is beautiful. Uh, whoever creates a tire generation will have my money. You know, select a few parameters and make a tire, tire generator. Why don't you post a, a job? Uh, you, you have, you know, blender.community. We have a jobs board 
where if you want to pay money for someone to make an add-on for that, you should. It's in Jobsport and uh, you should find it here. You can make a, a new, you can submit a new job offer. Why does it say job offer? It should just say, anyway, next. <laughs> um, here. Um, in, that, in this case, if it doesn't show it, ah, write a post, ah, because I'm not logged in, but if I'm logged in, it should show here, uh, submit a uh, job offer. Um, let us me let me confirm. I'm going to log in with my Blender ID, and I need to log into Blender ID, anyway. Next question. Oh man, BTS, uh, Blender sequencer prefetching is huge, it is. Are there any plans for easier baking of PVR material? Um, not that I know for like easier baking, but uh, no, not so far that I know. That grabbing feature is super amazing. It is. Thank you, Pablo Dovarro. Um, Thomas Miller. Hey guys, is it possible to provide a timetable when, yes, if somebody from the community would do it, please. Half the render time for free, GPU not included. Uh, yeah, well, I'm assuming, <laughs> yes, uh, that it's talking about the optics support so if you have an rtx um, graphics card like in my laptop from uh, box systems it uh, contains a quadro rtx 4000 and if you have one you can have in some cases up to half the render time uh, in some cases now for more details watch a previous episode for those interested in the sequencer it starts at 54 minutes thank you for the time stamp um one conscience zero dimension says zero, some little details that are so important i hope shortcuts logic will to point it will be re revisited i have my own shortcuts but now every new shortcuts are not added to them yes yeah yeah that's a pity i i've seen that too there is also for example if you have your if you have shortcuts key map for example and you save your key map, your own key map, with a name, and then you select it. The, not all the preferences are going to be visible, like for changing which one to select, I think, or one of them. So, yeah, it's uh, they need needs a lot more work. Um, let's see. So, if you have uh, suggestions, please put them in uh, uh, right click select, which is also here in Blender community. Next. Hi, Pablo. Thank you for all the great job concerning Blender video blogs. Thank you. I would like to ask you whether there might be improvements of 3D widgets, especially rotational axis. The problem I'm referring to is that in Blender, the widget disappears when you are rotating, so you only see the resulting state. In Maya, the widget stays always visible, so you can see what when you're that you might be trapping gimbal lock. This would be nice. Yeah, yeah. I think people having commenting. It does if you set your transform orientation to gimbal, just as in Maya. So the answer is that if you're rotating, for example, you can still see the rotation. If you have gimbal as a uh, as a setting, you should still be able to see the the axis while rotating. So thank you, Joseph, for answering. Sent 1,500 views and I was 649. Sometimes I watch on Roku an option to like. Oh, <laughs> thank you. If you want to uh, give it a thumbs up to the vi to this video, it would be amazing to help the algorithm to make people find these videos um, and find that there are official updates by Blender about the Blender updates. So it's good that people find out. Some people don't know. Can you believe it? That every week there's new features in Blender and you can actually learn which ones those are if you are up to putting up with a Latino guy uh, talking for one hour. <laughs> Next. Um, this is cool, but you could also do short videos when you are not at Blender Foundation. <laughs> yes, I could also do short videos and long videos and... Yes, I know, I know, I could, I could, but been busy, I've been busy doing this on a Sunday afternoon now. Uh, bit surface, so cool sculpting. You should hire some ZBrush developers because they will get unemployed soon. Uh, that's evil. Uh, I don't think we could afford ZBrush developers. We don't have enough money. Um, 
Next, where is the white paint tools? The options for smooth, clear, limit the weights on the vertex. They should be available. Uh, thank you people for answering each other. That's what community is about. Thank you for for answering. EMC bits. Um next. Tripanning <laughs> Susan. Yes, yes, Susan. Trippy Susan in the last episode. Um let's move on. Smoke simulation, sub friends fix, please. Please report it or poke. If there is already a report in the back tracker just and hasn't been updated for a while like many weeks or months please poke again what is it monday evening <laughs> almost um vpc virtual says uh, thanks for what all you guys and gals do for the blender community 2.80 and 81 has been fun to play hopefully the motion graphics side of blender will get some updates over time i've been learning the animation side to blender recently and i mean What's missing for the motion graphics? Like, what you read your top features? And because Blender has animation, import images as planes, um, it has... Uh, I, mean, I don't know, I'm just curious. Maybe the animation now is kind of a style of uh, automatic animations or more generic animations. So, everything notes. <laughs> Can someone please make a musical remix of Pablo saying next? All right, there, I gave you some more. Pablo does a sample of a hardcore towards the end and drops multiple these amazing clips in video alone. <laughs> With the right beat. Oh man, I would love to have this. Crowdsource going through 70 cents. <laughs> ah, if this happens, that would be insane. <laughs> or oh, this is amazing. <laughs> is your list available somewhere? Uh, it's not, but the, something similar is here. I could put it up somewhere. Um, but sometimes I feel it's a bit too verbose um, and this is nice, this, this list is nicer and more curated. Uh, I've added to the community. Thank you, Christian. Um, sculpting in 2.81 is already twice better. No, I think it's like 20 times better. The remeasure and the brushes and everything. Um, you have... I think this is a bug, so please report. Thank you, Joseph, for um, for helping out here. Um, my birthday live. There is no live. Um, and Daniel Salazar says, I think the ah the vertex color name thing at 41 minutes in the last episode is by design. It's not linked by ID. Imagine sharing the, sh the material between two objects and you change the color name in one. Yes, that's a that's a good point. So indeed the the thing I mentioned last week about the vertex color is is a feature, not a bag. I, I didn't think about the case. Thank you, San Daniel Salazar Sancudo, veteran of Blender. Uh, okay, so gracias, Señor Pablo. Gracias, Prince of Flo Sloth. Not to be mean, but what the hell do you guys think when changing the render display mode to the preferences? And it's even more hidden than obvious. It has to be changed back. Nobody can find this option. Well... I know, but also it wasn't very obvious to have in the render because we don't have re like we don't have user like preferences stuff here on the render in the menus. These are like operations, they're not like settings. And also it will make it more more uh, discoverable. It will make people go through these windows and, you know, learn about all the things you can change. So I don't I don't think it's a uh, it's a bad um, change. Blender on Windows Stories is still at version 279. Yes, there is a uh, task about it in the uh, Blender developer portal. Oh, cool. First comment. I'm really trying to get into more Blender. I want to create what I want. Love what you guys are doing. Keep it up. Thank you, William. Is Grease Pencil vector based? Uh, yes. <laughs> Thank you for answering, Jarek. It's, uh, yeah, it's like, um, like, these vectors is like a vertices. Can we get the latest experiment builds on Steam? Um, that would be so much. Maybe with the build bot, but there is again, there's a task on the developer portal about making this more automated, but uploading to Steam is a pain in the neck because you have to run the builds. It's not like just uploading a zip file. It's uh, you have to run some scripts. So it's not so easy to publish new stuff. But yeah, building from Blender from source is a good way. 
and also just download them from here or use the somebody made an updater that is paid but it's cool uh, nice video thank you very good boss this is so over the place it's literally painful to hear stop at 15 minutes to ear bleeding so it's um i understand your pain here is somebody answers thank you for answering follow up time code post or description will help a lot i know i know it's just that when i finish the video i'm so exhausted that uh, if somebody from the community would do it it would be amazing it happened in the past a few times um but yeah as like uh, jaggy said it's so over the place i try to do my best i try to make them into sections but sometimes uh yeah one topic goes to the other because what is ui what if the ui is under mesh it doesn't go into mesh or it going into sculpting i like the ui changes first maybe i should group them just the sculpting and and say the user interface for sculpting in the sculpting yes um I tried to do it a little bit today, but sorry about that. You can always read the Earth Shade. You can always read the changes here on Dev Talk. You can find the link here on code.blender.org, where you can also find videos by the developers on new features and development, like this amazing video by Jack Luke, where he's showing off the new development of everything nodes, especially the particle system area. So the particles are going to be replaced, hopefully in 2.82, with a new system that is node-based, allowing you weird things such as sampling the color of a particle based on the color of a texture for coloring particles, among other things. Uh, it's amazing. It's really amazing. I'm a bit scared of all the things that I need to learn, but it's okay all right that is all i think that was the last question yes so thank you everybody for tuning in i had a great time i hope you too and let's let's go full screen all right how are you guys doing by the way how are you using blender these days it's uh, i i've been using it a lot i'm doing lighting and rendering of lighting so pretty exciting it's a completely different style from spring and caminandes and other stuff so i can't wait to show you what guy what i'm doing over here um it's um it's a pleasure to do this every week next week i'm gonna be back in amsterdam yeah right because next week is gonna be 14th of yes 14th of october already and then one week and then it's a blender conference how where did my year go what happened i hope to see you uh, some of you at the at the blender conference this year remember it's in a new place is a new uh, in place in the city exactly the middle of amsterdam so it's gonna be exciting it's up to like four or five hundred people i don't know huge 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 i hope to see you over there or if you can't make it to the blender conference make it to blender today live monday 5 p.m central european time or you find uh, the time for your time zone that is all thank you again it's been a pleasure let's go with the style i have here my helper app to to connect with your ear holes in five four three two one Gracias. Thank you. I miss you. I hope we can go live as soon as possible. Bye-bye and see you next week.